Okay, let's talk about some common mistakes. Now remember, mistakes are good, we learn from them, but it's good to know how this test is maybe trying to trick you a little bit here and there so you can be aware for the, of these little traps. Okay, let's just jump right into a question and then we'll see. So, uh, Student Dory, can you, uh, can you read that one for me? A certain bookstore gets a shipment of 24 copies of a new book and sells 18 of them. What percentage of the books was not sold? Oh, this this one's easy. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. student Dory, let's do it. Okay, 18 out of 24, uh, that reduces to 3 out of 4, 75%. 75%, 18 out of 24, yeah, you could set up a proportion, 75. All right, that sounds pretty good, except no. Oh, oh, no. Dory committed one of the most common mistakes, which we call an RTFQ. RTFQ stands for? Read the full question. question. As you can see here, there's a little picture of a guy looking at a book. You have to look or shoot lasers into the book. I'm not sure what he's doing. Uh, yeah, what are all the details? Circle, underline, all those details. Because what do we see when we circle the question? What percentage of the books was not sold? Not sold. Uh-oh. When you see that not, and sometimes it's even in caps for you to begin with, it doesn't matter. Circle it. Circle it twice. Circle it three times. So now what are we doing, Dory? So if I'm looking for the percentage of the books that was not sold, I know that 75% were sold. Nice, nice. So, therefore, I can maybe look for the other 25% because it has to add up to that 100%. That would be a great way to do it. The other way to do it too would be just a label. When you're writing this stuff down and you had 18, you just wrote down 18 over 24. But if you'd written down maybe 18 sold over 24 total, that might clue you in as well. So label a lot because you could also do 24 minus 18 to get the six. Six not sold, six out of the 24 would be 25%. Makes sense to me? Let's do uh, another example. All right, student Kyle is looking hard at this one. So, we've got two sets here. If A is a number selected from set A and B is a number selected from set B, how many different values for A plus B are possible? How are you going to do this one, Kyle? I think, okay, I think maybe since I have three and three, I'm just going to multiply to get nine. But okay, okay, but I know you're trying to trick me here, so maybe I don't do that. Maybe I need to actually write these out. So let me write them all out. One plus three. Okay, I got them all out. One to three. It looks like I still have nine after all. Okay, my instinct is right. Nine. Choice D, Dory. Wrong! What? No, Check what, it out. No, what I do? Did you circle the question? No, I didn't circle the question. I probably, I'm, I've been telling everyone here to circle the question. I should probably circle the question myself. Take your own advice, Kyle. I probably should. Oh, how many different values for A plus B are possible? You know, I guess since I had all those things written out, I should have gone that one extra step and just solved. I had one plus three, I might as well have written down four. Just simplify whenever I can. Absolutely. Oh, I see. Some of them duplicate. Okay, so I have two sixes and two eights. Do I cross them all off? Absolutely not. You're just going to cross off the duplicates. Okay. So you see six once, you're going to cross off any other sixes. Okay, okay, great. So when I count those up, it looks like seven. That's got to be choice B. Great.